You know, when I started reading YA again, I really didn't think it would take this short amount of time to find something worth bitching about. But yet, here we are. My heart is pure, my hands are steady. There's vomit on the sweater already. Mom, spaghetti. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Gia. I'm a 25 year old lady who lives in my mom's basement, and I regularly stream on Twitch and now create YouTube content as a hobby because I am trying to refine myself, you know. Please excuse the background. Um, I know things have shifted from the last video, but uh, I'm rearranging some things. And also, the people who used to live here before me wanted to put in a bar and they didn't put in a bar so there is plumbing coming out of my wall that's not supposed to be there but don't worry I'm I'm gonna get another bookshelf that's gonna go right here so um I already ordered it like I'm gonna get another bookshelf and uh, whatever and then that's a just a portable closet I haven't filled yet but it's built so that's what matters anyway I really wanted to talk about Crave by Tracy Wolf in, in particular because uh you know for the first 30 40 percent of the book I was like you know what this isn't that bad this is an enjoyable time I'm having a good time whatever it doesn't matter and then some weird shit started happening like of course there was already some like tweeny bullshit happening but I was like kind of okay with it I was kind of like yeah whatever like I'm just I'm getting back into the flow of things like it's been a while since I've read for pleasure so like let's just not judge like let's not be judgy and mean about modern YA because I you know my YA era was like Divergent Hunger Games Delirium Maze Runner like that was my YA era and then I just kind of fell off after that so I was like you know what let me just go into this as open-minded as possible and to my credit I did and I I had a decent time halfway through I was like yeah this is a really good like not a four star read but not a three like a three and a half but then weird things started happening so I wanted to begin with a dramatic reading of my review of Crave so that I could then go into more detail and I have this separated into different chapters now this is completely unscripted this is just me um bitching because this is how my brain works. I'm really bad at like scripting episodes because I will uh, think of something funnier to say after the fact or I will write a joke in the script and then it is no longer funny when I'm not saying it off the cuff. So I'm just, I'm really bad at following scripts. I will have planned videos, of course, in the future, but like in general, when I'm doing my little talkie talkie thing. Like I don't really, I don't really like to follow a script too much. And now the review. Spoiler alert, I did give this book two stars. I'm unashamed of a two star rating but that's just what I gave it. So let's just, let me go in, into this. It begins off with a banger. I feel like Elle Woods when she said, I'm sorry, I just hallucinated. What? Because that's how I felt by the end of the book. That's, that's how I felt by the end. I should begin by saying I fell off the reading wagon when I went to college because I had to read for school. So reading for pleasure took a massive backseat. I say this because I'm quite literally a stereotype, a 25-year-old gamer lady who lives in her mother's basement, so needless to say, I did not walk into this book thinking that it was written for me. I knew it wasn't, but I'm also not the pickiest person and would generally give things benefit of the doubt. But this, besties, this isn't the tea. I feel like Leah gave me poisoned tea by the end of this book. So for those of you who are completely unaware as to what is happening like up until this point, so um our girl grace she goes to this magical school in alaska this boarding school that she sent to because her parents died and we got some little sussy stuff happening like from the very beginning what i had liked about grace is that she wasn't stupid and that she did have some sort of degree of self-awareness about her in that she knew something was up but she wasn't quite sure what was going on and she was asking questions but people were avoiding answering the questions so i felt um I felt as though she wasn't entirely dumb. Like, I didn't feel as though she was, like, just a Mary Sue, like, blank page character we were supposed to imprint ourselves on. Um, so, what I, that's what I liked about her in the very beginning. But then, as things, like, moved on, basically it got to, like, the 40 to 50% mark where Grace and Jackson just kind of admitted their feelings for each other. And then they were just making out, like, every other second. And I was like, oh, my God, I get it. Like, he's 16 and hot and he has a scar. Eh, like... I get it, Rusty. I get it. When you're 16 to 17, everything feels like love. But I was about ready to throw up. Like, I know I said I enjoy when I have, like, equal simping going on with two partners. But 
I'm also asexual and this shit made me want to hurl. So we're still unsure as to what's going on with Grace and like how people are trying to kill her and we're not sure what's going on, but like her life is in danger and like we don't know what's actually happening and everybody's like keeping secrets from her and she like barely knows what's happening, but she knows that Jackson is a vampire and that her cousin and her uncle are a witch and warlock respectively. She knows that Flint is a dragon and we get to this point. However, we get to a certain point where um, like Leah and Jackson have been fighting for all of this book because it is revealed to us that Jackson killed his brother Hudson who was like the prince of the vampire reigning family or whatever so he was next in line but he was also a fucking psychopath so Jackson did what was best for everybody and he killed his own brother and turned his back on his family because it was for the benefit of everybody but Leah was heartbroken by this because Hudson was her boyfriend now up until this point we were not it was not revealed to us that Leah was also a raging psychopath um at this point, she seemed, like, pretty relatively normal, and she just happened to, like, love the villain, which, I mean, which of us hasn't loved the villain before? So, uh, Leah makes a point to go to Jackson's tower and make up with him, and she gives them tea. She gives Jackson and... Uh, grace tea and grace drinks all of it but jackson only drinks a little bit of it so and jackson was supposed to kill grace that was the point is that the tea had some sort of inebriant in it that it was supposed to make jackson unable to stop himself from draining grace dry so that she could die but this didn't make any sense to me because later when jackson stops himself from killing her and then leah catches up to them she takes grace down into the tunnels because the whole point is that Grace had to be alive for the whole ceremony where she was trying to bring Hudson back to life. But then she gave poisoned tea to Jackson so that Jackson would kill Grace. But, like, she needed Grace alive. So, like, that didn't make any sense. But where it really went off the fucking rails was this precise moment where, and I shit you not, Leah pulls out a gun in a magical boarding school where there is vampires and dragons and witches and wolf shifters and everything in between this literally felt like the part in my immortal where it was like voldemort gave me a gun <laughs> like voldemort gave me a gun that's exactly what this felt like and i just remember coming out of the page and going what what the fuck is that so leah a vampire takes out a gun and shoots jackson another vampire with a gun <laughs> when i tell you i fucking screamed because i was like this is <laughs> voldemort gave me a gun <laughs> oh my god oh. <laughs> i can't it was too funny but like that was when it really hit me that i was like oh my god this book is going off the rails like it was unstoppable it was a train hurtling towards a brick wall and there was nothing I could do to stop it. And it all happened because Leah pulled a gun on Jackson. So this is the part of the review where I spend a little bit of time detailing parts of the book for the people who like to read book reviews instead of books because book reviews can be funny. Um, so this is things that I've like lightly discussed before. But for continuity purposes, I'd like to recap the entirety of my review. Um, for those who love reading book reviews, instead of the book, let's give you a quick re recap. Grace, who is not like other girls, trademarked, is orphaned. Of course she is. And is sent to live with her remaining relatives in Alaska to an elite boarding school whose aesthetic can be best described as the house from the intro of the Scooby-Doo Where Are You <laughs> cartoon, the one from the 60s, combined with a Midwest university with both a tunnel system and electronic security. But to find out, there's vampires, witches, shifters, and dragons? That one got me, I won't lie, which it did. It did get me. Um, of course, we had our classic love at first sight moment with Jackson. His name is spelled with an X to be different. In which we aren't sure if they're enemies or lovers, but we don't spend too long trying to figure that out. The entirety of the plot circles around Grace, a normal, everyday California girl, instantly falling for a guy with a tortured past and a scar, who is obviously a vampire, and someone is trying to kill her. No idea why just somebody i continue on by saying that you know i don't hate everything i'll tell y'all now i don't hate grace i genuinely liked grace for about 60 percent of the book 
while she does engage in not like other girls behavior, such as this specific scene in which uh, she's making sure that the reader is aware of the differences between her and Macy, being that Macy, Macy is a girly girl who loves Harry Styles, the show Legacies, the color hot pink, and wears a full face of makeup. And Grace is a girly girl who loves all of those things, but she only owns mascara and a few tubes of lip gloss. There was this pivotal scene, like in the first like 25% of the book, not even pivotal. It just made me roll my eyes. So more like pivotal of my, you know, pivoting of my eyeballs to the back of my skull. So it's this scene where it's before Grace is going to this like small assembly where like all the students are supposed to meet her and it was very weird because she's told about how it, by multiple other people that they've had a lot of meetings about her coming to the school and they're not sure like what's so special about her like what's going on here and everyone is you know making her a target in that respect because they're being told to be on their best behavior and if you know anything about teenagers they don't want to be on their best behavior so continuing on, like, Grace does call people out frequently to tell them, hey, besties, this is sus behavior, and I know y'all are hiding some shit. The writing is explicitly telling you that there is more going on, and I may have been screaming into the void at how obvious and cringy it was, but I found myself being thankful, nay, elated, to have a protagonist that was self-aware enough to side-eye things going on, which, admittedly, I still stand by. I still stand by me saying that, that I appreciated having a protagonist that was like, hmm, shit ain't right. I appreciate that. I mean, I can appreciate a dumb bitch every now and then because I myself am one, but sometimes it's a little too obvious to ignore. So do I, I did appreciate that. I'm going to skip the whole part where I talked about like, I appreciate the equal simping before between Grace and Jackson, but like their their PDA got, just got to be too much. This is this is where I start to get a little unhinged. Granted, I did type out this review at two thirty in the morning, but I said I have never been one to beg for exposition. But in this nearly six hundred page book, I should not be left wondering: a) what powers vampires have; b) is there an explicit difference between made vampires and born vampires besides classism and the fact that there is probably a plot line in later books that could be considered diet eugenics because sometimes the plot just writes itself c what the fuck do witches even do besides the bonnie bennick floating feathers trick because literally that's what macy does she's like yeah i'm a witch and she does the equivalent of when bonnie bennett made those feathers float in like the second episode of the vampire diaries like i know exactly what you were going for and it I didn't like it. And D, why don't I see, this one's unhinged, why don't I see or engage with any other dragon characters besides the one whose name is a neon sign, sign blaring, I breathe fire? And E, are there other dragons that I'm going to meet named Ash, Blaze, and Spontaneous Combustion? I admit that joke was pretty fucking funny. I still laugh. I still like that. The last one is an exaggeration, but the first two, I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be shocked if Flint had two brothers named Ash and Blaze. No, no, no. A sister named Ash and a brother named Blaze would not be shocked. And then the last paragraph is, anyway, I liked how self-aware this book was that it acknowledged Twilight and the, the Vampire Diaries universe as things that exist in the same world. To me, it felt like a 600-page fourth wall break. I felt like I was on an episode of The Office the entire time I read this book. The level of self-awareness mi made me giggle. What can I say? I'm easy to make laugh. But this book is also a dumpster fire for the paragraphs I've listed. Will I read the next four or five books? Unsure. They're on Kindle Unlimited. It'll only cost me my time and mental health. But I guess if I want to find out what the hell witches can do, I may have to read book two begrudgingly. And then at the end, I said one last thing. Gracie and Macy, Gra Gracie, <laughs> Grace and Macy had to stand legacies when TVD and the originals were right there. That part, that part, like at the very end, the least believable part of all of that was the fact that Macy and Grace stand legacies. The Vampire Diaries is right there. It's literally right there. I could scream. Just to kind of attempt to wrap this all up into little mini bite-sized chunks of like my summary based on different aspects of the plot, I'd like to break it down into several little chapters. So 
one, the premise. The premise I found okay. Like the premise of a 16 to 17 year old girl who loses her parents in a tragic accident and has to move quite literally to the exact opposite place to where she's used to to live with her remaining family to this boarding school in Alaska and it's littered with supernatural creatures and someone is trying to kill her and she doesn't know why period end of story I'm interested like I thought that the premise was interesting um I expected it to be a little bit um I don't want to say darker but I expected it to be a little bit more mature um like I've said previously I did see this book a lot on like the shelves at Walmart and the shelves at Barnes and Noble like in the best sellers section and I honestly did expect it to be a little bit more mature but I think that may just be my gap in between um this book was not written for me. This was, book was quite literally written for people who were a decade younger than me or more. So I should not be the main voice that is criticizing these, uh, the, the writer's intention to write a book for ca people who are much younger than me. That and like, who am I, like a 25 year old millennial who grew up in the time of cell phones to bitch about like all the text isms and the teenage isms that Tracy Wolf puts in here like uh Grace's inner monologue doing the OMG lol like the whole text speak in her head who am who am I to truly judge when like I lived through that era I lived through that I know what it was like like I choose to believe that this book was like published in if it were to be like in 2022 like say like this book occurred in 2022 I firmly believe that it could have taken place like 10 to 15 years ago and would have felt more relevant than it does right now. Like literally just remove any reference to anything within the last 10 years and then make it the other reference. Like instead of talking about how much they love legacies, just talk about how much they love Buffy the Vampire Slayer or like True Blood or anything, anything, literally fucking anything that is like 10 years older and the book would instantly become better in my eyes because I don't feel like teenagers talk like that anymore. I didn't look up the publication date, but I don't think teenagers talk like that anymore. Maybe I'm just not around enough teenagers, but I, I don't really want to be. So moving on to characters, I liked Grace 60% of the time. I stand by that. We somewhat stand. We somewhat stand. Her uncle's cool as shit. Uh, her cousin is cool as shit. Um, Leah's a raggedy bitch. Um, I knew Hudson was going to come back to life, but he's a raggedy bitch too. I did see a little bit of spoilers for future books that potentially there's a love triangle between Grace and the two brothers. The one that comes back from the dead. Like you can't, you can't introduce to me a dead fucking character in book one. That's the brother of one of the other main characters and the main character's love interest. And then tell me he is of no consequence for the rest of the, se the series. Like I knew he was getting resurrected. I didn't know in what way. I just knew that he was coming back. But a love triangle, if that's real, I'm going to scream. I guess I'm going to find out when I read the rest of this series. But Jackson, tortured, emo, Tumblr boy. If, like, I don't know if you guys watch Strange Eons, but she just put out a new video talking about, like, the, uh, the Tumblr iceberg of, like, hot Tumblr men. Like, if Jackson was on that iceberg, he would be up at the top. Like, basic, obvious basically the Logan Lerman like when remember when Logan Lerman was the white boy of the year on Tumblr that's Jackson's energy that's that's the vibe here it <laughs> is like perks of being a wallflower Percy Jackson in the Olympians era Logan Lerman plot interesting at first became completely unhinged later and that's all I'm gonna say about it conflict fucking stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life Leah was sus from the beginning, but to sacrifice, first of all, back to the, let, can we c c dial it back to what I talked about in the first seven minutes, where Leah gave poisoned tea to Jackson and Grace for the point of Jackson to kill Grace. But then the entire huge conflict in the, in the height of the conflict Leah needs Grace alive to sacrifice to bring back Hudson. 
So why did you give poisoned tea to Jackson to kill Grace if you needed her alive? The math ain't mathing. So, continuing on, miscellaneous nonsense. I don't remember what exactly the miscellaneous nonsense was that I wanted to bitch about, but I think it's pretty well covered in everything else that I have discussed. I honestly expected me to be bitching about this for a lot longer than looking at the time 24 minutes without cuts. I honestly expected my bitch session to be a lot longer than this, but whatever. Even I have my limits, apparently. Anyway, this book is a massive nightmare. It was a never-ending nightmare. 600-page nightmare. I thought I would never get out of it. Like, I can't really say that because for about the first, like, 40%, I'd say, like, I didn't even make it to the halfway mark before I was like, mm, maybe this shit's a little unhinged. And for a 600-page book, for me to make it 40% of the way through and not be, like, under some delusion of grandeur that I was thinking that this was going to be, like, a three-star YA read, what was I thinking? What was I on? Honestly, I don't know what I was thinking because half the time, I don't even know what I'm thinking. But like, I honest to God, like, do not get it. Like, what? I cannot believe that the two seconds we got of like, hey, witches exist is Macy basically doing the. I'm a witch. This is a fruit snack piece of fruit snack bag. I am flabbergasted. I honestly believe Macy should have been there when. Uh, like, instead of Flint and Jackson fighting off Leah to save Grace, like, why wasn't Macy involved? Because it, the book kind of posited Jackson and Flint to be in sort of a love triangle with Grace because Grace, like, felt as though it was very Edward and Jacob, not going to lie, which, of course, they did bring up Twilight, which I thought was funny. Like, Jackson, before telling Grace that he was a vampire, like, sending her a copy of Twilight – it's fucking hilarious. That's that shit's camp and I love it. However, it's like positing Flint, Grace and Jackson to be the sort of love triangle, but she very obviously like has the most feelings for Jackson. So I don't know why in like the height of the central conflict where Leah's trying to unalive Grace, that Flint is the one that is trying to save her after Jackson went on and on about how the dragons couldn't be trusted and now he's trying to save her where was macy so i'm just a little bit confused like i felt like her she was not utilized enough as a character i think we could have seen more from her other than just being like the best friend but also her cousin character um basically the um just the the blank wall to like for grace to talk to like if she ever needed someone to voice her thoughts to if we needed to get out of her internal monologue macy was basically just that for a way to grace to uh enunciate her thoughts instead of us constantly like talking to her inner goddess like anastasia Steele style like <sighs> i'm flabbergasted absolutely flabbergasted but this book was not written for me this book was written for people who are a decade younger than me and I can respect it if you like it. It was a two-star read for me. It may not have been a two-star read for you. I think I think I want to continue reading it. But I think it's going to be a minute before I pick it back up again. Because I have other things that I want to read that I think will be a lot better. I am about 40% of the way through one of the July reads that I wanted to continue. I haven't haven't announced it yet. But it's it's going to be something that sounds incredibly familiar. So um, there's that. And then the second July read I want to finish by the end of the month is another book that everybody has heard of before. Like these last two July reads are literally just me like catching up with the crowd. This is it's just me. I'm not even at the start line with for booktube. Like I'm not even like at the start where everybody's talking about new releases and like everything that's relevant right now. I'm like all the way in the back like one round before like okay I'm, I'm catching up now on stuff that was you know big and relevant like you know five to seven years ago and that's like six books into the series 
I'm getting there, I promise. But <laughs> it's just, just taking me a while. Anyway, if you've made it this far into my like probably 25 minute long bitch session about Crave, then consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel. Like, what are you doing? If you want to find me literally anywhere else, you can find me on the Dumb Bird app at Huntress Gia, or you can find me on the Gamer channel on Twitch at Huntress Gia. I stream like two to three times a week. Um, schedule's pretty uneasy and it's, it's pretty casual, but I, you know, I do what I do. And I'm going to be starting July's game of the month pretty soon. Uh, by the time you guys see it, I'll probably already start it. It'll be uh, The Witcher 2 is July's game of the month. I have all of my games of the month planned out until December. December is the first month I don't have a planned uh, game of the month. So if you're interested in watching me play through The Witcher 2, consider following me on Twitch and catching a stream. It would be lovely to see you. Anyways, guys, that's all for me today. Remember to drink water and be nice to each other and exude kindness and empathy with everything that you do. I will be posting this video ASAP, and I'm going to start reading so that I can get that July wrap-up done. Yeah? All right. I'll see you guys next time.